Hey Fantas, welcome to G Eats, my new cooking series. Today I'm going to have one of my biggest supporters of my career, my Aunt Kareen. She single-handedly made all my tours a success, so I'm really pumped for her to come. And what's funny is, is she doesn't really cook, but she has this one meal. Hey, wait <laughs> just a minute. You're going to see me on lots of future episodes. <laughs> I cook a lot of things. I've only, seen my you cook. I've only seen you cook this one thing. Oh my gosh. Well, you don't spend enough time with me. Well, maybe that's Obviously. true. <laughs> She does make this one thing superb. I don't know the other things that she makes, but the one thing I do know is she makes a killer, killer shortbread recipe. Stay tuned, Fontas. You're going to see me a lot. <laughs> anyway, so let's get started. So tell me about this recipe, the one okay. recipe that you have. Yeah, the one. Okay, lot. so this is actually a recipe of your Grammys. Okay. And it's one of the many recipes that she actually created okay. and invented herself. Oh. And this is her sweet and sour ribs. Or we also have it a lot over chicken. Huh. So it can be either, either or. Either or. Okay. Either or. See, Grammy is in, in the blood of all of us. We, we have all these recipes locked down. Well, you know, we came from a big family and um, there were a lot of financial challenges. Mm -hmm. Grammy and Papa decided early on that Grammy was going to be a stay-at-home mom. Mm. So there was only one income. Right. So there were seven of us. And a lot of mouths to feed. A lot of mouths to feed. Right. And on a tight budget. Mm -hmm. And there were many times that I would, um, you know, it'd be late afternoon. I'd be thinking about what we were going to have for dinner. And I'd look in the fridge or go out and look in the pantry. And I'd be, there's nothing for dinner. <laughs> What are we gonna eat tonight? Yeah, Grammy's just whipping something and up. When we got <laughs> called to dinner, there would be this spread. spread. <laughs> and I would just be amazed at how did she even pull this off? Right. And a lot of the um, Booth family favorite recipes are actually recipes that she created. Mm -hmm. And I think they came about by her just being in the Messing kitchen around. going, what do I have? Right. These creations just right. happen. Right. So she gets all the credit for this recipe, but it's delicious. It's so good, you guys. So. This is really, really good. Okay, so yeah. where do we start? Okay, so first we're going to uh, put ketchup. We ketchup. need uh, 14 ounces or okay. a cup and three quarters. Okay. So I'm going to just take the cap off this. Gosh, it's like the last episode where Granny can get the <laughs> sticky. Get the, the Maybe I should have a baby yeah. on the side. Woohoo! Big summer blowout. You're not gonna help me. <laughs> and it's just you kind of add everything together. Okay, so I'm, this you have, four, have to have 14 ounces, but this is 20 ounces. So, so we're gonna need a cup and three quarters. Gonna, oh, we're not gonna eyeball them. No, we're gonna do a cup and three quarters. <laughs> and this is gonna be more some of your great sounds like you've had at previous right. cooking <laughs> shows. <laughs> and next, this is like one of the key ingredients, and you have to have this. And this is called homemade chili sauce and the brand is homemade i guess yeah i don't know what the brand I is don't either know what the brand and is. you can't find this anywhere outside of california just so you know so if you are outside of california you actually have to order it on like walmart or some brand and then get it shipped to your house because i've tried with right. ben's family because they love this now that i introduced it to them with some other recipes that we have and so when you see chili sauce in the ingredients it can't be anything else this is the secret mm -hmm. ingredient yeah so um it takes a full jar of this and there's a there's a ketchup version of this and it's not as good yeah it's it has to be it has to be this little squatty <gasps> jar <gasps> And that whole thing goes in there. Right. Aunt Kareen is somebody that I like to call your finder. She, when she finds out the thing that you love, she finds the hundred little things that she can find of that thing. For instance, my Aunt Kareen finds out that I love pugs. I don't even know how many pug things I've received from you, but you have found every little pug, a pug pillow, a pug, did you card. like your Halloween pug I love card? It. I just got a pug Halloween card and yeah. it was great. It was a pugkin, pugkin uh, or something yes. like that. Yes. So anyways, she is your finder, but it is even more than that. When I was on tour, 
I was touring a lot in Northern California and staying at her house while I was there. And I would be on the road, you know, it's very grueling hours at a time. You know, you basically wake up, play a five hour show and then rinse, repeat. And so I'd just be exhausted. And she would be at my show, cutting me up watermelon, like, oh, what do you need for your voice? Oh, let me cut up the watermelon and cucumbers because that'll hydrate your voice. I mean, she was just the biggest road warrior while I was there. So that anything I need, yeah, anything I needed, you basically found at some point. Well, and one of the times you came, it was um, just prior to fall or at the beginning of fall. And Gina and I both are really fond of pumpkin anything. <laughs> Pug, pumpkin. Not, there's no M in that. It's an N. It's pumpkin. Like, pumpkin. So when she arrived, I had pumpkin bagels. Oh, I had everything. pumpkin oatmeal. I had Oreos. Every, Oreos. Yeah, pumpkin Oreos. <laughs> we had. We tried every pumpkin thing that came out that oh, year. Oh man, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm a, I'm a sucker awesome. for the fall. I'm yeah. a sucker for the. I mean, obviously, look at everything's decorated. This is my yeah. mom's house, but yeah, I love when she decorates for the fall. And yeah, pumpkin is or pumpkin is. No exception. Yeah. Okay, next part. All right, brown sugar. And I like to put this in the middle of the wet ingredient, so dump that in. Okay, all of it? Yes. Okay. So it's one box or 16 ounce bag of brown sugar. All right. And then okay. next we're gonna do our 20 ounce can of crushed pineapple in heavy syrup, because the brown sugar and the heavy syrup, that's kind of the sweet that's gonna offset our I don't, sour. I don't know if you guys have noticed this, but uh, these last few recipes of Grammys. <laughs> if you're on a diet, this is not the recipes for you. There's a reason Grammy's sweet, and that's because she likes her sugar. Right, right. Okay, yeah, we'll go okay, with that. Okay, so we're, and then we're gonna add some of our sour, which is a half a cup of lemon juice. Okay. When you tour with Gina, or I suppose anybody, it's uh, quite, uh, uh, eye-opening experience and you realize that touring is not for the faint of heart. We, <laughs> we did a lot of trips from my home in the Placerville area up to Lake Tahoe where she did a lot of shows and it's about a two-hour windy road, steep mountain drive mm -hmm. and so she would be scheduled to play someplace and I don't know, what is it, usually four or five hours? Yes, those shows were five hours long. So then afterwards, you know, you have merchandise that you're selling and you have fans that want to interact with you. And, yes. and so it's not like walk off the stage, pack up and go. And then you have, you know, everything to pack up and load in the car. And I'd be thinking, okay, fans are done, check. And now let's start packing this stuff up. and. Out would come Ted, who owned several um, businesses in the area, and he had uh, a, a really popular burger place in town that was right by where we had been playing. And he said, hey, Gina, you want to come on over here and um, climb up on a table with your guitar and do a couple songs? <laughs> right. And she'd go, sure, yeah. Yeah, why not? And so that would have been like maybe 10, 10.30 at night, mm -hmm. probably around 10.30 by yep. the time we were done with fans and stuff. Mm -hmm. And 2.30, Gina would be going, okay, really guys, this is my last, last song. song. Right. We had about seven last songs oh my before we got out of there. And then there's a two, pack up the car, and then a two hour drive home. Oh yeah. Was, and then get a little bit of sleep and wake up the next morning and get ready to do it again. It was brutal. So Super it, brutal. It was something. And <laughs> my favorite part of having anchoring, anchoring on the road with me was, when you're on the road, you, you have like a merch table and you have all these things, but you're when you're traveling by yourself and touring by yourself, you are always looking for somebody to try to manage something that's going on. You don't want to have to wear all these hats of like, I'm promoting you buying a CD or a shirt or, and then also I'm, I'm performing and singing. And so when she went on the road with me, I had this table set up uh, and she would be <laughs> behind the table. And I'd be like, okay, Aunt Kareem, this is our bit. Our bit is, is you're going to be yelling at people, get a CD, you got a CD. Just be over the top about it, right? But I'm going to act like you're crazy. Oh, that's my crazy aunt, Aunt Korean. And I'm like, keep going, Aunt Korean, you know, whatever. And so we sold so many. I, I would sell 10 times more CDs just having her there being like, hey, get a CD, read all about it, you know. Well, if someone came over and acted even 
like they were half interested. <laughs> I'd said, oh, if you can hang out until Gina's next break, Gina would be happy to autograph that for right. you. Right. <laughs> oh, sure, yeah. So I have a line of people waiting for her to take her break <laughs> right. so that they could talk to her and get her autograph. So but that's one of the things that I think is, is one of the greatest things about you is having the opportunity to be on the road and see you interact with your fans. That's very nice. And you love your fans. Me too. And you spend so much time with them. You're never too busy. You're never too anxious to get out of there that you can't bend over and hug a little girl right. and sign her CD mm -hmm. and ask her what song was her favorite mm -hmm. and spend time talking to people. Aww. And it's just... <laughs> it is true. It's I just, try. Yeah. I really do try. Yeah, no matter it's how just, tired I am. You're a total package. You're really authentic. Ugh. But I think one of your strong suits is the way you relate to your fans yeah. and always have time for them and make them a priority. Yeah. Shout out. Awesome. Look at See? It's awesome. Hey, <laughs> come in, keep going. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. Another okay. crazy ant moment. No, a perfect ant moment. <laughs> okay, so, so we're close. We, we, yeah, that's perfect. Is that okay, fine? So put that in. All right. This, look, this, don't, this don't look good right now, but it, it will. Oh my goodness. Okay. okay, and then we need we need about a teaspoon of about this. Teaspoon. <laughs> this, yeah. is, this is measurement. So like, yeah. And so um, I'm kind of like one-handed here okay. right now, but all right. So I just kind of this is oregano leaves, just so you know. And again, guys, we'll. We'll post the whole recipe below, unless it's a secret recipe. I don't think it's a secret recipe. We'll post the whole thing below with all the measurements and everything, um, so you can do it at your home. Okay, all done. All right, yeah. Throw it in the thing. Do I need to stir it up a little bit? Yeah. All right. And then we're gonna put it on to simmer. Okay. While we prepare the ribs. All right. So now we have to do some work on the ribs, yes. right? Okay. So we're just gonna open okay, so them and we're gonna lightly salt and pepper them on each side. All right. So I would probably, I'd probably like cut it into thirds right here. And so what we're going to do with these is we're going to um, brown them. We're going to sear them in a hot skillet with oil and then we're going to pressure cook with them. Okay. And um, doing them in the pressure cooker, they just like fall apart. Yes. Literally, they just like melt in your mouth. They're like M&Ms. <laughs> Clearly not using the right knife for this. I hope uh, Gordon Ramsay's doesn't do a <laughs> Oh, what are you doing? Have you ever seen a, a show of his where his family came in to cook with him? Uh-uh. There's reason for that. <laughs> and Kareem with the jokes. Oh my gosh. Now I kind of hope he does see it. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so now we're salt and peppering them on both mm -hmm. sides, mm -hmm. right? Okay, yeah. so. Just lightly salt and pepper them on each both sides. This is Himalayan salt, so it's not as strong as normal table salt. Just so you know. Oh, I probably should have did the pepper. Wasn't thinking. You suck. You can, it's all right. You can actually use spare ribs. I like to use boneless country style ribs because they're a lot meatier. And um, I like boneless because I always think, why pay for the bone? And you can't yes. eat the bone, so. But you want to pay for the bone, ladies. <laughs> <laughs> To learn. This is cooking, but this is also sex ed. <laughs> <I'm just kidding. laughs> okay, so now we're gonna sear the meat and we gotta get the pan started. So now the oil's heated up and we're gonna start putting this into sear. And then in Korea, you need half a cup of water for the pressure cooker. For the pressure cooker. So the object here is just to get the meat brown on all the sides. Okay. So I'll uh, turn them over and then kind of lay them on their side so the edges get brown. We're not really trying to cook them all the way through because that's going to happen in the pressure cooker. All right. Okay, so now we need to flip the meat over yeah, so the brown's on the other side. Over. Yeah. Because we're just trying to sear them and get them brown. Yeah, they should have been turned. And I typically, I try, this is a trick I do, I try not to poke the meat even though that's easier to flip it because you're losing juices and you're trying to get yes. juices as much as possible. That's right, so. exactly. Gordon Ramsay would tell point. me not to do that. <laughs> but this is a great recipe that you can prepare early in the day when you're having guests in the evening time. Mm -hmm. And then you just take it out and put it in the oven. Right. And Perfect. finish it off. Great. But you've got all the prep, all the mess cleaned up ahead of time, but you yes. got this awesome, awesome. 
is to fit yeah. closer. Yeah. First musical memory of me. One of my uh, cutest like memories that I have early on was you were in elementary school and your mom and I were in the front seats and we were driving somewhere. It's irrelevant where it was. I don't even know. Shopping probably. But you were in the back seat by yourself and you had your Walkman and your headset on and you were like wrapping your heart out. <laughs> I don't know if you had Toby Mac on or right. what you were it's listening probably to. Eminem but or it was something. like, yeah. You were just like rapping at the top of your voice. Walkman and Kareem, that dates me. Yeah. Walkman. Yeah. I'm just kidding. Okay, so now this okay. is ready, right? Now, those are going to go into the pressure cooker. Right. And we'll see if they're all going to fit at one time. And I don't know if you've done much cooking with a pressure cooker. I have not. It's kind of a... Uh, it's a song and dance? Or well, I? no, it's kind of... Uh, maybe a style of cooking from the past. I don't know if so many people do it nowadays, but it's an excellent way to just get really tender meat mm -hmm. products and at a relatively short period of time. Okay. But it's kind of tricky. Okay. So let's move and so now we're going to put the lid on. Okay. And make sure oh it's down on all the but edges. Was, well, you don't hot? you don't want the top to blow off. Oh no! Well, you okay. just touched the top of that little oh, no. pan. I thought it was on. I was like, oh, this Okay, but now it's mode. Oh my God! He on X Games mode. Okay, <laughs> so now we have the lid locked. Okay. And now you let it build up pressure and steam. Okay. And when steam starts flowing out the top here, okay. continuous, then we're gonna put the top top on, okay. which is gonna. All right. Cause the pressure to rise inside. Great. So now we wait. So, our short ribs are done pressure cooking. Our sauce is done. She taught me a little trick with the pressure cooker that if you don't want it to explode when it's done, you have to go over and put cold water over it before you open it. You can't before just you take open it. Little cradle off the top. Cradle off the top. Okay. Cool. Yeah. So now what are we doing? Now we're ready. Now we're ready. Okay. So now we have our ribs. First of all. That looks amazing. And now we're gonna put them in our dish. Okay, without the juice, right? Right, no juice. No juice. We're gonna cover them in our sauce. And they're already tender, guys. Like I'm barely, I'm yeah. having to scoop them out because they're, they're not, gonna shred. If you're not careful, they're gonna fall apart, yeah. It's already, it's already shredding apart. That's crazy. And okay. you want to have a, a big enough dish so you're not layering them. Right. So that they all can get covered well in sauce. Okay. So, okay. Now you need to spoon your sauce on top. All right. Let's touch that. A little... It's hot. It just came off the burner. <laughs> yeah. It just burned me <laughs> in the process. My whole thing is I'm going to sell at the Staples Center in two years. Right? It used to be three years, but now we're in two years. And uh, I've thought about, okay, when I get to that moment, Aunt Kareen is running the merch show. <laughs> like, I've already thought, Aunt Kareen's going on the road with me. She's, she's telling everybody what to do and how to run it. Okay, so did I do it? Okay, I so now what we're going to do is um, we're going to put it in the oven okay. for a little bit. We, we're dealing with hot product, hot ribs, hot sauce. Right. But a lot of times you're making it ahead of your party or your okay. dinner and um, you're maybe pulling it out of the refrigerator. So then it has to go in the oven for like 350 for 30 minutes to 40 minutes, just till it's hot and bubbly. It's not okay. gonna take very long because we've got hot. Already hot. Okay, the oven for me. Voila. Voila. We just completed my one meal. You're <laughs> She only knows one. <laughs> I don't even know why, but I swear you But somehow that. I'm going to be on numerous episodes. Right, right. So we're either repeating the one meal over and over again. It's me teaching oh, her meal. We're going to do some other <laughs> yeah. recipes that I, I'm going to be teaching her different meals. So I'm just kidding. <laughs> okay, now we wait. Oh, 
That's pretty freaking good. Your one dish is pretty freaking good. Awesome. See why my family didn't mind eating it every night? Right. <laughs> All right, guys, that is the second episode of G Eats. If you like this or want to make it, please share to your friends or tag your friends. Um, I'd love to see how you guys make this and see if you guys like it as well. Bon appetit. <laughs> see you later. <laughs>